Hello everyone, how are we doing? I hope you're having a good day. I wanted to give you an update on Debbie Collier's case and also a touch base on um, the family of four from Michigan um, and also give you a quick update on uh, Cassie Carley. So let me just go through these real quick for you. Um, the first thing is, so put out yesterday, Law enforcement was expecting to make an update to the Deborah Collier case yesterday, but any news will likely wait until after a celebration of life service for Collier is held tomorrow in Athens. It will be a private service by invitation only. So the question now before law enforcement, if the complete family will be in attendance tomorrow, does that imply that family members are no longer the focus of the murder investigation? When asked that question, one ranking member of the Habersham Sheriff Office told WCHM's Nora Elmazen that would be a good assumption. The 59-year-old Collier's remains were found September 11th. Her death has been under investigation and highly publicized. Sources close to the family say they have requested the information regarding her death and who is responsible not be released until after the celebration of life. More news is expected at the first of next week. WCHM will continue to keep you updated as the investigation comes to an end. So there is going to be an update, it says the first of next week. So Monday, right? Um, so there's gonna be an update with Debbie's case on Monday. I will let you guys know about that. Um, I'll definitely keep you guys posted on what the update is when it happens. Um, but I just want to give you a heads up on it. And then in regards to the family, um, I just saw one thing that stood out to me on this article. I'm not going to read all of it. Um, it said that uh, Brandon, the 19-year-old, was secretly using a phone, right, when they went to the gas station. Um, and I just want to read down here. Inside the gas station, which is about 300 miles and five hour drive from the Fremont home, Brandon, 19, asked to use a phone, but couldn't figure it out, manager Heidi Bonifield Bowler told the US Sun. The attentive store manager said that she didn't think the rest of the family knew that he asked for the phone. That's interesting, right? Because that wasn't mentioned um, when I talked to you guys yesterday about the case. but. Uh, who he was trying to call or why is unknown at this point, which only deepens the mysterious and concerning circumstances surrounding the family's disappearance. About five hours later, the father, Anthony, called a family member at 4 p.m. on Monday. That's the part I wanted to bring up to you guys. That was not mentioned in anything yesterday. Anything, as far as we knew, when they left, they didn't try to have any contact with the family at all that we knew of. So apparently five hours later from when they stopped at the gas station, Anthony or Tony had tried to call a family member. They don't say what family member, um, but they say it was at around 4 p.m. on Monday. So that's kind of interesting. Um I don't know. I don't know. I'm uh, waiting for more updates to come out about the case today, and I will keep you guys posted on it if anything else comes out about it or if they end up getting seen um, somewhere else. And then we have um, the arrest report for um, Marcus in the Cassie Carla case. So they had dropped the charges for him. Um, I'm not sure if you guys um, were remember, I, I believe I did an update on that. Um, and so they dropped the charges out of Florida because they wanted to pick them up in Alabama. Um, so this is um, what it states. Um, you are hereby commanded to arrest Marcus Spanavello and bring him in um, for the charges of Corpse abuse, Class C, Type F, and um, and there's uh, no bond to be set per the district attorney office. 
and then it just kind of goes um they say uh the 20th day of october is when this was filed um abuse the corpse of cassie carley by knowingly treating the corpse in a way that outraged ordinary family sensibilities to wit by burying her body in a hole in a barn yeah really nice and then it just goes through um, name and address of defendant um ascertain the true name and address of the defendant put his name address um then information uh informed the defendant the charges against him inform the defendant of the right to be represented and then it says like by who right here and then inform the defendant that he has the right to remain silent bail determined that the defendant shall be released from custody pending further proceedings right and it goes down here to other conditions no bond if charged with a felony offense inform that the defendant um the right to demand a preliminary hearing and this states uh the 25th so on the 25th i'm assuming is probably going to be um what does this say defendant made no demand okay so the demand of for a preliminary hearing is on the 25th and that was signed on the 21st so that's the update on him he officially has had that charge put out laid on him now um through alabama so now we move forward with that um yeah so that's where that stands i will update you guys if there are updates with that case as well but um the the main one i really wanted to give you um was that debbie update coming on monday and so just be prepared be ready for that um we should find out some information because we haven't heard anything in a while so um i look forward to that i will let you know i hope you guys are doing well i will talk to you guys very very soon take care